Okay, in part three, let's get into the Anulet and their predecessors, the Thule. And of course, we'll look at the Thule Society. It's important to understand the topics of the previous two videos that the Lost Ten Tribes went to Arzareth. And that from Arzareth, those Christians started a Christian conquest and conquering all these lands for Jesus Christ. And that was connected to Prester John as well as Genghis Khan. And the dates of when this happened are relevant around the year 1200. So about, you know, 800, 900 years ago under the command of Genghis Khan, they overspread the earth, not only conquering their neighbors, but uh, also spreading Christianity. That's why on a map like this, a map of Christianity, we find in Tinduk, the area of Arzareth, there are many Christians, some Christians, some Christians, and that based on the distribution of Christianity, the densest population of Christians is here in Tinduk. And we know they came from Israel because we could see down here in Asia or Tartaria, the Christians are under the patriarch of Jerusalem. So in addition to spreading Christianity this way and this way, and the time frame is relevant here. If we look at Wikipedia, which isn't a great source of info, but on the Anuit people, it says that the Greenland Anuit are the descendants of the Thule migrations from Canada by 1100 AD. And these go back to, you know, carbon dating and stuff. So it's probably 100 years off being Wikipedia, not a 100% valid source of information. But notice the 1100 and Genghis Khan overspreading the earth around 100 years later in 1228. On the Thule people, it says they are the Proto-Anuit and the ancestors of the modern Anuit. And they were in the coastal Alaska by the year 1000 and expanded eastward towards northern Canada, reaching Greenland by the 13th century. I don't 100% trust Wikipedia on anything. Um, and, you know, maybe they were in Alaska around the year 1000, but you could see that their migration was happening around the 13th century and is certainly a part of the Tartars overspreading the earth around the same exact time frame. The Last Imaginary Place, a human history of the Arctic world, encountered the Anuid around 1576 and said that they be like two Tartars. Long black hair, broad faces, flat noses, and tawny in color, wearing the sea seal skins. And David Krantz, the Moravian missionary to Greenland, one of the earliest scholars to speculate on Inuit history wrote in 1820 that the Inuit had originated in Grand Tartary between Mongolia and the Arctic Sea. John Ross wrote in 1830 on a horde so small, so secluded, occupying so apparently hopeless a country, so barren, so wild, and so repulsive, yet enjoying the most perfect vigor, the most well-fed health, and all else that here constitutes not merely wealth, but the opulence of luxury. But these Anuit at the time are called the Thule. And here, researching Thule, of course, mentioned as pygmies. Just like we find on Mercator's map right here, North Pole pygmies here. They're inhabiting these islands. But in the romance of the Thule, the nobles were blind as buzzards by day and sharp-sided as owls in the dark. Sounds like somebody using their pineal gland vision. And there is an ancient book called The Wonders Beyond Thule, which deals with the marvelous adventures in all parts of the earth. Now, founded in 1918 in Germany was a secret society called the Thule Society. And I've never made the connection till now, but look at the logo. Doesn't it look like four islands with rivers running out of each one? It's almost an exact match of the North Pole. You've got the four islands, of course, with the river running out of each one. And I find a striking resemblance to the Thule Society logo. Four parts, river running out. And this would be the land section of the North Pole. So this is, of course, the ground, the land section. So interesting that the swastika comes from the North Pole in the sky you have the rotating north star which forms the swastika when you look to the sky yet when you look to the ground you get the four islands with the rivers so while the 
Thule Society logo covers the ground part of the North Pole. The swastika covers the sky part. Ancient legends tells about Hyperborea, a continent inhabited by giants, a community of supermen located at the farthest polar north with a city like transparent glass. The skin of these beans being almost blue and the hair pale gold like wool. Hyperborea was connected with all the other continents occupying the Arctic regions before the modification of the Earth axis that produced the second universal glaciation. Iceland, Greenland, and Spitsbergen would be vestiges of that fabulous continent. According to the Chaldeans, Hyperborea could only be reached by a secret tunnel in the ice that arrived at the Euphrates. It is spoken of a cavern of Iceland that transports to a very distant time, and they write about Thule, the capital of Hyperborea. So there's where Thule comes from. It's the capital of Hyperborea. And what was done with the survivors of Hyperborea, of those who took refuge in Iceland, Greenland, and the green earth of another time? Let's turn back to the claim that David Kranz says that the Anuit came from Great Tartary between Mongolia and the Arctic Sea. And the Anuit at that time, of course, is being called the Thule. So turning to David Kranz's work, a History of Greenland from David Kranz, 1767. He says that the Greenlanders that live in the north and the northwest coasts of the frozen ocean bear a great resemblance to the people of the northeast regions of Great Tartary between the Ice Sea and Mongolia. This is the route our Greenlanders must have taken they came first into Tartary after the great dispersion of the nations. Uh, what he's talking about after the lost ten tribes were kicked out of the Israel, the great dispersion of the nations, they went into Tartary, and then they were driven further and further until at last they were hunted up to the remotest corner of Tartary near Kamchaka. Now this is discussed in much detail on my video called The Tartarians of California. And it talks about the Tartarians migrating from Tartary over into North America. And that looks into what I was calling Kamatuchaka, correctly called Kamchaka. And uh, it talks about all the historical journeys from the Tartarians up from up here in uh, Arzareth, or northeastern Siberia. And the route they took mostly was from Kamchaka over or Kamchaka this way. The reason why you'd leave from Kamchaka is you can follow this string of islands, which maybe in previous times was a, a continuous land bridge and you could just walk across here. But that's why you leave from Kamchaka and uh, follow this route over. So this history of Greenland is saying that the Greenlanders came from Tartary after the lost tribes of Israel were kicked out of Israel. They went north, then they went into Tartary and went further and further northeast until they finally were in the remotest corner near Kamchaka. And when they could no longer be there in peace, they were obliged to take themselves to America. Now the historical Tartarian accounts talk here of the Kalmak as they call themselves because it means Kal to settle and Yumak a tribe so Kal Yumak that settle a tribe and now the Greenlanders and the Tartarian writer Abu Ghafi Chan or August Chan who reigned in Tartary long before the birth of Christ had gotten to a place where uh, his People could no longer follow him on account of the deep snow, and they were called in reports the Kalatsi or the Kalik. And now this Karlik, or the plural form Karlit, is the very name the Greenlanders give themselves. So in a general history of the Turks, Mongols, and Tartars, I did find a chapter on the reign and death of Abu Ghafi Chan. And in this book, I found the same account speaks of an Ogus Chan who founded the Karliks, who stayed behind in the snow, the people it seems were on a march and they were overtaken by such a great drift of snow that they could not go forwards and it was a long time before August Champ's army found them again but this term Karlix or Kalmyx uh, seems to be Tartarian 
in origin. Uh, this book called Ancient Civilization speaks on the Thule people. And it talks that uh, sometime around, like it said, 1000 AD or most likely around 1200 AD, the Thule reached Greenland. Again, 1200 matching up with Genghis Khan's overspreading of the earth. The ancestors of the Thule people originally came from Siberia in Northeast Asia. <laughs> now, just what is Siberia in Northeast Asia if we go back a thousand years? Let's see, Siberia and Northeast Asia, of course, that's Arzareth. And the Christian nation of Prester John and Genghis Khan. They moved eastward to the islands of the Bering Sea before moving on to Alaska and spreading through the Arctic region. So the Tartarians of Arzareth, the Lost Ten Tribes, went across into Alaska, spread across North Canada, and right up into Greenland. Of course, let's remember that if these tribes of Dan and Naphtali are up here near 80 degrees north, which would correspond with this area up here, it would be quite easy, as we previously mentioned, to have them cross over this way, uh, getting into Greenland from crossing over here. And one more book, The Canadian Arctic Prehistory, the second wave, when it's speaking on the Thule culture and the Inuit. And notice the dates lining up, of course, with the Tartarians overspreading the earth. Just a few old interesting maps. Here's the Strait of Anian or the Bering Strait. This is Alaska and the Arctic Circle having Quiveria being right down here. And we see cities and likely Tartarian cities of Pagul. I thought this map was pretty cool because it has the lands at the north with the rivers coming down. This is Quiveria and we got Alaska, modern day Alaska. But north of there, we've got the Magnetic Pole, as well as the islands, uh, four islands at the North Pole with the rivers coming down. Quite the uh, beast down here, a mix between a unicorn and a, uh, and a sea monster of some type. The founding of Canada here says, They were to sell to the lands of Canada, which form the extremity of Asia. The pilot explained these lands are attached to Tartary. And that was from 1530, so around that time, they believed or there was a land bridge between Tartary and America. Now, the modern language spoken by the Inuit is called Inuktitut. And Inuktitut uh, comes from the Proto-Eskimo language, or they call it the P.E. language. And it's a reconstructed ancestor of the Eskimo languages. It was spoken by the ancestors of the Inuit peoples. So we could call this the uh, the uh, ancestors of the Inuit people or the Thule. Um, we could call this the, the Thule language. And it's pretty evident that the Thule came from Siberia and Northeast Asia, came from Tartary. In other words, the Proto-Eskimo language is probably, it's likely what was spoken in this area before they migrated to America and eventually the Proto-Eskimo language uh, becoming in Nuktitut that they speak nowadays. But the Tartarian language really being lost to history. Perhaps the PE Proto-Eskimo language is somewhat close to the Tartarian language. It says the Yupik languages and the Inuit dialects have remained very close to their Proto-Eskimo ancestor as far as word bases, affixes, and grammar are concerned. So it's likely that this PE language is somewhat close to the Tartarian language. But I think what we can demonstrate throughout this video series is that the Inuit people their ancestors are called the Thule. And the ancestors of the Thule originally came from Tartaria in Northeast Asia. And that is why our historians tell us that the Inuit originated in Great Tartary between Mongolia and the Arctic Sea. They were Tartarians. 
And by being Tartarians from Arzareth, they, of course, are from the ten tribes of Israel. So I think there has been sufficient evidence presented to say that the Anuit, who were once the Thuli, are Tartarians, that they are a Christian nation. And when Genghis Khan began to overspread the earth around the year 1200 or 1150, that's when the Thule migrated into North America. And the Anuit, being Tartarians, are of course originally from the lost ten tribes of Israel. So we can definitively say the Anuit people are the descendants of the lost ten tribes. And it's likely that being isolated up here in the far north of Canada and Greenland, the Anuit might be perhaps the purest of the descendants of the biblical patriarch Jacob. So in Revelation, when God says he will select 144,000 from the tribes of Israel, 12,000, of course, from each tribe, has this already happened? Or maybe one of these tribes or more are preserved in the far north Inuit. <laughs>